Our new CNBC Fed survey suggests that this year could be a good year for stocks, maybe not for bonds. Steve Leisman is going to walk us through the details. Hey, Steve. Good morning, Carl. Yeah, the CNBC Fed survey is showing many don't agree with Fed policy, but they think the Fed's going to be on hold for the rest of this year. And they see stocks riding that policy higher, bonds riding it lower. SP forecast for the end of 2021. You can see how much it's changed since December with all the fiscal policy, the Fed on hold. You're up, I don't know, what do you want to call that? 500 points there from what the December forecast was for the year end 2021, 4247, a lot of which is already baked in. Uh, a little bit better for 2022. You can see again, 600 more points to the outlook uh, for 2022, where the uh, S&P would top 4,500 by year-end 2022. 10-year yield, though, that's going to uh, be heading up towards 2% by the end of this year. Again, much more tightening or much much higher yields b baked in now than were baked in in December. Call it 2.4, 2.45% by the end of 2022 for the 10-year. That's the estimate from the survey. 34 respondents this time around. Barry Knapp, among them, managing partner at, uh, he's director of research at Ironsides Macroeconomics, says we are in the early stages of a Reflation regime that is favorable for equity investors, but not bond investors. Here's the outlook for the Fed and the monetary policy that underpins these market forecasts. The first rate hike not seen coming until December 2022. Three months later than we surveyed in March, the tapering begins in January, should be announced a few months before that. That's one month later than the prior survey. 65% though say we don't need QE either for the economy or for market functioning and the Fed funds rate hits about a half a point in December 2022. The outlook includes an economy where growth marches higher, the unemployment rate heads lower below 5% this year, but there are still worries about stock valuations. 70% of our respondents believe stock prices, stocks are pricey that, that is specifically not justified by expectations for either earnings or growth. All right, how do you put that together? Three ways to resolve that conflict. Earnings and growth can increase even further beyond the lofty levels to justify the valuations. Valuations can fall or the imbalance can remain with high stock prices underpinned by a quiescent Fed. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.